Well, today's tutorial is going to be on removing Gorilla Tape residue. Now, I went out on a three mile run this morning and so I have been putting this video off for a while because it's got some messy content in it and requires a little bit of special setup but uh, I figure before I take a shower let's go ahead and dive into this one all right so stick around All right guys, so today's tutorial is actually about removing Gorilla Tape residue. Now, I'm using a bike wheel in my example, but this applies to anything. I mean, I've seen in, in the sound reinforcement world people using Gorilla Tape to fix mic stands, tape down cables, things like that. Um, you know, in the photography world, you might be using it to set up custom light fixtures. I mean, Gorilla Tape is very useful. Uh, very strong, very, you know, widely available. And so, you know, this this residue issue is kind of a problem and there's different ways to remove it. So in today's video, we're going to use mineral spirits to remove it. Uh, not because I think it's the best way to do it or the most effective solvent to do it, but mineral spirits is something that a lot of people have in their house already. So um, we're going to use that as our removal solvent. Um, so, you know, going into this, guys, make sure to wear gloves, uh, stay in a well-ventilated area. Again, even though mineral spirits is a fairly mild solvent, uh, just keep your safety up. You know, just don't, uh, it, especially when you get re ready to actually remove <laughs> that tape residue, um, you, you know, it's going to get messy. So you do not want that on your hands. You know, and the reason I'm using a bike wheel for this example is... Uh, bike wheels are very severely impacted by this. It's actually called a, a ghetto hack in, in the bike world. Instead of people actually using tubeless tape in order to set up their bike wheels, uh, they use Gorilla Tape because it's so widely available, it's inexpensive, um, and it works good. However, the downfall to using it is that this particular material is left on under that rim for oftentimes six months to a year whenever you get ready to redo or change your tires is how long it's on there and so that residue just gets worse and worse and worse as you know time goes by and of course it's it's in the summertime getting heated up against the asphalt you know so it, i mean it really bakes on so there is i i think i can honestly say there's probably no better example of gorilla tape residue than on a bike wheel. Uh, it's the worst condition you're ever going to see. And so that's the thing is we're going to get go through this and see what it takes to remove that and how you can do it. Now I bought this bike wheel off of Craigslist and I'm relatively certain that the original owner actually was selling the bike wheel because he couldn't get that residue off. I, you know, there was an attempt to remove it um, as certain sections, you know, were, were kind of cleared. But um, I don't think it was successful, and I think it probably took him hours to do that. So he just decided to, you know, um, you know, just sell the wheel as is. And so I picked it up, and I'm taking on this challenge now to get rid of that residue and see what it's going to take. How how much work is this really going to be? If you know how to do it, it's not that much work. So we're going to get into that. Uh, you know, again, wear your gloves, well-ventilated area, just, you know, stay, stay on top of things. I mean, they, like I said, if nothing else, this is going to get messy. So, you know, just, uh, <laughs> just, uh, follow along and let's get into it now. All right, guys. Well, first, a couple of apologies up front. I wanted to do this video outside where I had a little bit more room, uh, but it's just so ridiculously windy out there right now. And that wind is also not just ruining the audio, but also killing my allergies. So we're going to do this indoors. And uh, anyway, to do this little project is fairly simple. And this is not really a bike wheel tutorial. Like I said, this applies to anything. In our chosen industries, you know, you might have a lot of people using Gorilla Tape on mic stands to repair light fixtures, to create something custom out there. And that residue just gets over everything. So this is gonna be applicable to a lot of things. But I luckily have this highly affected bike wheel here. And you can see that this is a very highly impact. Now, I did some test areas here trying to get that residue off, um, but this is going to be a tutorial to kind of show a bike wheel in specific, and it also applies to other things. But on this bike wheel, you can just see how just built up how, and I mean, it's sticky. That's mucky trying to get that off with anything. So 
that's what this tutorial is going to be for. And to do this project, you see everything here that you're going to need. You have, of course, the item you need to get the residue off of. Um, I'm using this uh, old beach towel for a blotting rag, and I'm going to use the scissors to cut the st cut strips uh, for that. Uh, we're going to use mineral spirits. Now, this is not a you know a debate about which is better or faster material for taking that stuff off, but as far as solvents go, mineral spirits is fairly safe, and it's very common. Almost everybody has mineral spirits somewhere for something in their house, but for this project it works pretty good. Then I'm going to use some shop towels, and I, that coil that you see there is baling wire. Now you could use either baling wire or a wire coat hanger, maybe a string. Just keep in mind that whatever you do choose to use, it's probably if it's not metal, it'll probably be bad you know, or weakened from the mineral spirits afterwards. So don't, don't use something that you want to reuse later. Um, that's why I'm going to use baling wire. So this is going to uh, start out this way. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut uh, the towel into strips. And in this case, uh, since it's striped, it's going to help keep it straight, <laughs> which is a good factor. So. Uh, I'll go ahead and do that and then we'll uh, cut back with how to apply this. Okay, now we've got some strips cut, and the reason I had to cut two strips is because in the case of this particular wheel, this is a 29 inch uh, bike wheel. Now that means the surface area of the residue is actually about a 24 inch, roughly, um, approximate diameter there. So if you do your calculation of pi times diameter, that means I'm going to need, uh, if I remember correctly, somewhere around 75 inches worth of material to cover the whole wheel at once, or I could do it in sections and just reuse the same piece of rag or towel. Um, but since this is a 29 inch wheel, I need to cut two of those. So I'm going to use tape to join them just temporarily, prepare things for the bailing wire to hold it together so it's easier to assemble. So there you can see basically what's happening is the wire is just holding the rag onto the rim. And what that's going to do is it's going to give a place for the, the mineral spirits to soak in and really just give it time to, uh, you know, to work. Okay guys, so if you have graphics on your rim, you don't want to get the mineral spirits onto that. So I didn't have graphics, so I didn't worry about it, so I just cut the strips very roughly. But if you are, if you do have graphics, you want to protect them from the mineral spirits. And the way that you do that is being much more critical about cutting the width of those strips, making sure they actually lay down inside the channel. Uh, and then, instead of just glopping on the mineral spirits the way that I did, you can use something to the effect of a, a sealant injector, something, something like this. You can actually get these fairly cheap, um, but this holds a lot of material. It'll easily go around the tire once, um, but that you could use to actually apply your mineral spirits so that you don't get any over drip um, into the, you know, onto the graphics. But that's about it. So we're just going to let that sit about 10 minutes. Uh, check how dry the towel is. It depends on your climate, I think, how much it's, it's going to evaporate. But uh, 
Five minutes in, you may want to give it another application of mineral spirits. Uh, but, you know, I, I would say just, uh, you know, make sure that it's, it's good and soaked for about 10 to 15 minutes, you know, um, maybe five minutes is, if it isn't heavily you know, effective with residue. But, um, yeah, let's just come back in about 10 to 15 minutes and we'll see how that does. All right, well, let's uh, take this off and see what we got. Now in the event you got in a hurry the first time and didn't use gloves, you're definitely going to want to use gloves for this part. Now there's two ways that you can do this, is either this rag already has mineral spirits on it, so you can actually use this rag to do the wiping, or you can use the shop towels. Get this into view here. And obviously some parts are going to get more affected than others with the uh, mineral spirits, so uh, just don't be surprised if there's some parts that are staying on heavier than others. And you have to make sure that don't use the same part of the rag for everything. You, you flip it around, use clean parts so that you're not re just re-smearing the, uh, the mineral spirits. Like I said, this part is very, very messy, so um, make sure you got those gloves on. You do not want to get that sticky residue all over your hands. Now, I would say after doing this now, I would say that it's heavy enough that I probably would have given it a little bit more time. Uh, this is, some of the parts of this rim are heavier than I expected, so uh, I probably would have given it a bit more time under the mineral spirits. A little bit more soaking time, I mean. There are some parts of this rim that are particularly affected. And I know that there's one part where I didn't quite have the towel covering. This rim's actually got some scratches in there I'm gonna have to deal with. So in case you didn't notice, I'm actually going around the rim just a couple of times. Each time it gets a little bit cleaner. I think it's a little more efficient than trying to work on one area and get it perfect. Okay, now I'm just going to take my shop towel. And there we have it. So a wheel that was that heavily affected with residue, and it only took that long, took a little bit of elbow grease, but only took that long to get off. Now like I said, there's probably a better solvent to use, but I think most people have mineral spirits around the house, so you don't have to buy something new. But uh, that's it. Well there you have it. I hope that was helpful. Um, you know, ultimately it wasn't that much work. Uh, I made a couple of passes around the rim and cleaning it off. I did it, it wasn't all in one shot. Um, I would say probably a good 10 minutes of elbow grease while you're doing it and then whatever the prep work was. But ultimately, this was not a lot of work to get rid of even the most 
like heinous example of Gorilla Tape residue didn't take that much using mineral spirits. You know, and again, there's other solvents you can use, but I figure everybody's got that around the house. Um, I hope it was helpful. Guys, like and subscribe. Going to have some more stuff coming up. I'll talk to you later. <laughs>